Over 28 million passengers set foot upon cruise ships every year and hop from country to country taking in cultural sites while spending their hard-earned cash. The cruise ship industry is far larger and more lucrative than most consider, with passengers spending over $46 billion a year. The small handful of companies that make up the industry are raking in cash. Unfortunately, upon closer inspection, it seems these companies use a portfolio of legal loopholes to ensure they pay the least tax possible and to keep the money in their own pockets. Looking at the industry as a whole, you'll find more than 250 large cruise ships circling the globe. Three quarters of these ships are owned by the big three cruise providers, Royal Caribbean Cruises, Carnival Corporation and Norwegian Cruise Line. Between them, these companies earn over $34 billion a year. They deal with 80% of global cruise passengers and they own the biggest cruise liners on the water. These companies earn revenue through two different avenues, ticket sales and onboard purchases. Now, ticket sales account for around two thirds of this revenue, while onboard purchases account for around one third. Though tickets represent a majority of revenue, onboard purchases account for the majority of the company's actual profit. Royal Caribbean's Symphony of the Seas is the largest cruise ship on the ocean, 15 decks high and nearly four football pitches long. When at full capacity, the Symphony of the Seas can squeeze in 6,680 passengers, along with 2,200 crew members. During an average week around the Caribbean, Symphony of the Seas would expect to make an average profit of $300 a customer, which means when at full capacity, it can easily bring in a profit of $1.7 million a week. The cruise ship industry is, on the surface, an American industry. Nearly every large cruise operator has their headquarters within Miami, and over half the passengers are from the States. Overall, you'd expect a close alignment with the US, culturally, socially, and economically. However, this isn't actually the case. The cruise ship industry enjoys the cultural attachments to America, but it will try everything it can to avoid the economic ties. Overall, the majority of cruise ship companies pay a tiny 0.8% tax on their revenue, far below the US corporation tax rate of 21%. Luckily for you, if you're watching this video and own a fleet of multi-million dollar cruise liners, then here's our step-by-step -step guide on how to avoid paying taxes and keep as much money as possible for yourself. The first step in this whole legal operation would be to ensure that you make Miami your base of operations and open a headquarters in this fantastic city, which is commonly known as the cruise capital of the world. Once established here, it's now time to work on the legal paperwork. Working with an obscure 99-year-old section of the US tax code, we can register your ships in any country around the world. This is lucky for you, as it means you don't have to register your fleet to the United States. We strongly recommend that you register your fleet in a country with more lenient laws than the US, an act in the industry called flying a flag of convenience. Through this legal document, we can register your fleet in whichever country you choose, thus adopting the laws and regulations of that country. If we choose a country with more relaxed laws regarding workers' rights, vessel operation and taxes, this will have huge benefits to your company financially. We primarily work with countries that have relaxed tax laws to ensure maximum profits for you and your shareholders. Most of our previous customers choose the Bahamas with Norwegian Cruise Line having 94% of their fleet registered there. However, we do have a few other low tax destinations within the portfolio. Panama, Bermuda, the Isle of Man and Malta are all popular registration countries. We should also let you know that Panama has a beneficial open registry system where non-nationals or residents can register their ships online. This offers quick and easy registration. We'll also work closely with port authorities in these countries. Now, their authorities will all want to work with a large client such as you, so frequently they'll enter into a bartering scenario, meaning that we can get you the best deal possible. You know, just between lawyer and client, off the record, there are some other things we can do to help you save money as well. We advise you hire staff from outside the Western Circle. We suggest looking in Eastern Europe and Southeast Asia, as they're hard workers and will work for very little. In general, the average cleaner or dishwasher on a cruise ship is required to work at least 308 hours a month. That's 11 hours a day, seven days a week, no days off, for up to 10 months. 
that's at an average of $2.27 an hour. As you can see, the accumulated advantages of registering your fleet to one of these jurisdictions can be significant. We hope you found our services at Ocean Lawyers useful, and we hope to hear from you soon if you'd like to proceed with moving your fleet to an offshore jurisdiction in the future. If you've enjoyed today's video, please leave us a like, it really does help. And if you'd like to see more of our content, hit subscribe and the bell notification icon to be told whenever a new video goes live.